So is she clicking the link or is she clicking the video? She's clicking the link. Yeah, just goes to the event page. Okay, so this is clicking the right up here. Yeah. This one? Let's see your event page. Maybe that's the same. It's not. You should be able to invite people in. So, um, let's view. Oh, what's this link? So this one here, if I do this, and uh, okay, and then I click the play triangle, is that right? That's she's clicking on the thing, but what we want is the, to invite her in, and that's where, oh, okay, here. so click up that, go back up here to the top. Here. Yeah. See, it never calls her up, that's the whole, the she bad thing. Have a Google account. She does. She does because here she's here. Right click that. Copy the link address. Okay. Go in here. Put it in there. And then erase everything from the slash backwards and put a plus in there. And this or this? Pull her up. Yeah. This. It's not letting me. Do a plus, Suzanne. This was my problem last time too. And when I called it, I did it again, it worked. I see your face and hear you, but you can't hear me. Right, she's not inside the hangout. So try inviting me in and see if that works. That's not it. Yeah, it never calls up. Well, because you probably what would help is if we had everybody in a circle, we'll just do Mary, Mary plus dot com. Okay, there I am. Do you know her email? Let me see if this says, can I? Well, if you click on that, then it should open it up. She's in your circle. So yeah. Uh, if click on that. Okay. What? I'm still here. Okay. Invite me. Let me see if I can find that. Let's see how we can invite her on that link. So I don't want to add any more confusion. Mm -hmm. Okay, that works. And then she'll see, she should see. So what she needs to do is have Hangouts dot com open then she should see an invite to, to join and it's through her Mac right yeah so I just have hangouts.com open and you'll see a little green hangout icon let me just ask her what is her email yeah that might be it too. Is she's got different ones going on. And she's your email for Google Plus. And that was a problem last time. Was that? Yeah, no, no, no. That um, when I did it this way, I don't have her name, right? Yeah, you have to have something that. Yeah, she but then we closed out everything and we redid exactly the same thing I did before. And I was able to see her name and see everybody's name. But this time, like, I can't even see your name. You know what I mean? And it's just weird because, like, and it just happened to be that this way it does not hold up anything. And then if I close out everything and I just redo it all, right. it's, it, and this time I try, I made sure that right. all of this, 
this stuff here that I tried to get everybody in. I've invited everybody in my circles. I did. Okay, so that's a step. Oh, this is people that have said yes. So I'll go back to the Hangout. Mm -hmm. Yep. Click that, copy that link, and see if she can join using that. Okay. Can you see on yours um, and see if that link does work that I just posted? And the thing is, the posts don't even show up. Well, the posts, what do you mean they don't show up? The posts I just did. No. Oh, here. Um, so try that one, that 74E one. That no, one just opens up. No, that one does. That one's here. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Oh, you know what? I don't know why I can't hear her. Wait a second. Yeah, that does. The one you just posted. That's the family. That's okay. That's the one. Suzanne? Suzanne? Because, okay, so I'm going to try again. And then when we start the, um, the Google Hangout, um, the video call error uh, ended because of an error. She's saying. It's not well. It's still working for me because I'm in the hangout. And I can yeah. hear you fine. So. Um, can you hear me in there? Okay. So I would suggest that she close out of everything, clear her cache. Okay, I invited her through Mac. I, I can't hear you though. Can you talk? Can I saw you. No. I can't hear you. Can you hear Susan when she was in there? No. Well, I don't know. I didn't have my ear. Oh, I'm muted. That's why. Now, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, I think one good thing is that Google Hangout automatically mutes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And then um oh she's on, I think. Yay! 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 That only took fourteen minutes. That's a lot faster than last time. <laughs> we tried, we tried. And you know they have changed a lot in Google, so it's an ever evolving platform. Also, Mary um, I'm using Chrome instead of Safari. Is that wise? Chrome is better. Chrome is the yeah. best. I use Chrome. I'm using Chrome. Well, I normally use Safari, but for um, for this, I try to use Chrome. But then sometimes that yeah. screws me up. Chrome's a Google product, and it's, they all play much better together. Yeah. Okay, so how do I get that cool little um? Banner that thing? Okay. that says Wingpact. You go ahead, Mary. Go. I turn my sound off. Go to, over to the left, and there's a little box called Hangout Toolbox. Do you have yeah, that? I did this before, so maybe. If you saved it, it might be there. Yeah. Okay. So I click the toolbox, and then over on on the very left, there's a little circle with a head in it. Click oh, on that. That's the called the lower thing. third. All right. I click the little toolbox that's like a little red suitcase. And then yeah. there's a th what says know who you are on Google. That 
now. Let's see. It should say over on the, well, yeah, it's just, it's Google yeah. saying yes. It's fine. It says a box. Hangout toolbox would like to, and then there's a list. Yeah. Oh, I should allow um, this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, now on the right, there's a little bar. Yeah, so in the little box at the top, it, there's a circle with a head in it. Yes. So click on that. That's called lower third, and then type your name and your tagline. I guess it didn't save from before. You have to tell it when we're done. Um, it's kind of tricky to save. Yeah, maybe I tried. All right, let me go find the logo. There's a little bug flying around my head, and he's trying to make it go away. Go <laughs> <laughs> like this whole time. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Do it now. <laughs> Um, you can change the color to whatever makes you happy. Yeah, I remember doing this before. Okay, yeah, let's try this one. Um, and then if you, uh, down at the bottom it says saved presets, and um, you can so save that. And then I the next the time logo. you can choose one. Oh, more. now I have to turn it on, right? Yeah, and then when you turn it on, it's going to be backwards. Turn it so on. So then right the next lower, to the... Where it says, okay. Lower, lower third, third, and then there's a little on button. Yeah, I turned it on. And then right next to that, you should see it. It will be, like, if you see mine right now, it looks backwards to see. me. Yeah, I see yours. That's a nice picture. Wow. And then, um, thank you. You're tired of that. Um, and then you click that little arrow, with, and that makes it look right. Oh, but it doesn't show... It's not showing it at all. So did you click the on button? Yes. But there's also this custom overlay. I don't want that on, right? No, that's if you, that's fancy. We can do that next time or practice before. Like, that's if you want to put something, like. I remember there was this thing about so a standing in front of, you know, 200 people. On or something. So the one right next to the lower third is the one you want on. Yeah, but it's not showing. I turned mm -hmm. it on, but it doesn't come up. So you typed in your name under the mm -hmm. low in that box, and mm -hmm. and then find this. Let's see. I don't know why it's not working. So. There was some special order. I don't have any other thing in there. Just have the on button turned on, my name, and then my little tagline. I don't know. I can't see what it looks like. Um, too much. Sylvia, I got accepted to be a Google advisor yesterday. Yay. I'm kind of scared, but it'll be good. What's a Google advisor? So I had to apply. It's Google um, for business, and it's an advisor through Google. I don't work for Google, but as a consultant, I'm there to monitor communities and an answer people's questions about Google for business mostly. But it's, oh, it's nice. a super cool honor to be chosen. It, it was, and I'm pretty excited about it. OK, well. Let's see, Suzanne, I could try screen sharing with you if you want and show you. Okay. <coughs> Let's see. Let's do this one. Oh, and you got a bunch. I don't know. Oh, that's because of this, I think. Okay. So, do you see my screen? Mm, where? So, you should be able to see it. Since I'm screen sharing, you should see oh, it. Oh, I see. If I me. click on Mary, it looks like me, not you. I'm seeing my screen. So you don't. Your so name. Is, okay, so Maybe I can like see. It's like reversed you. somehow. So I can. Uh, 
Ooh, I just did that weird thing that's now it's getting yeah. all um, So I see on the right next to you, I see a second screen, which is my screen, my Hangout toolbox. Oh. I see a second screen that's, well, maybe this is your screen. Are you looking at me on your screen? Yeah, I look okay. at you, and then when I look down on the bottom, I can see. I'm just going to get some water. Okay. But are you looking at my screen? Right now, I'm looking at, I can see. I'm looking at you. If I clicked on you, it's going to make that crazy weird thing go on right. again. Um, well, I see how in lower third you have your name and your mm -hmm. thing, and then you have it on. That's exactly how I have mine. Hmm. I don't know, then, what the problem is. Hmm. Okay. Uh-oh. So, okay, so you stopped sharing your screen, right? Yeah. Maybe Hmm. A little rotating thing works because it's flipping my video. So can you see your name underneath you? I don't know. Nope. Yeah. Maybe save it as a preset and see if that works. I did. Hmm. Did you try clicking on one of the presets to see? I only have that one preset that I just that I just saved. And what do I click on the little check mark next to it? Oh, so when I go down under the presets and I click the little check box for the yeah. one I want, that pops it up. If I unclick it, it doesn't pop up. Yeah, it moves the names into the slot on the top, but it doesn't show it on the screen. Yeah. It's weird. It's like it turns it off and on. It's not interesting. Well, do well, we need to do you're in. Yeah, still there? Yeah, she's just hey, putting on. Hey, how are you? Are you gonna join us from here? Yeah, where's the meeting? Right here. Oh. We're getting everything. Okay. Come on, it's, it's a. It's oh, it's a, a virtual. It's, it's a virtual. Oh, well, I showed up. I know. Nice to see you. I know. It's how are you? Nice. Good. Hi, I'm Mary. Nice to meet you. JD Davis. Hi, JD. Hi. Do you want to sit over here, Mary? Mary. Nice to meet you. So we can get you um, on what computer then? Can, we, can I have him share mine? I feel like that. Share yeah. yours. Is there going to be a lot of echo? Well, if everybody turns off their sound until they're speaking, then it okay. okay. shouldn't be enough. Oh, okay. sounds good. And if you have headphones, that's better. We have better. on the line. Um, Hi, Jake. We've been kind of trying to get more people to join. So. Thank you for all your help with um, yeah. Yeah. Sure. And then... Uh, I can't hear you anymore. You got in by um, having your email, Suzanne. Oh, you're muted, Suzanne. Okay. Okay. 
um, Hera for Hub. Your question is? Um, did, when you logged on, did you were you able to get from Google or from the email that I sent you? I tried it both ways. I think the email okay. that you sent me had a more recent link that worked better. Because you sent me a bunch, but the last one you sent is what I used. What do I do? If you want to put your docs over here so you can watch your docs and not have to be. Yeah, okay. It might be needed to stay there for a little bit. I think it's a long one. This one needs to be plugged into? No, just take out the long one and plug it in with the short one. I'm still writing that this one. one. This one? Okay. Good. Were you able to see that link? I put the, the new link in oh, yeah. Facebook. So, all okay. you can see now. So maybe Mary is our Google. Yeah, you got it. Awesome. Katie Davis is there. Yeah, yeah. he's in my office. <laughs> so we'll see who else comes on. I just hear a echo. Okay. Probably because. Perfect. Don't need a logo. Is there any? There you are. All right. We'll see who else comes on, Suzanne. Sure. Okay. okay. And if it's not, then I'll get Jeff off and we can just have a conversation, all three of us. Okay. Um, maybe if you mute that, that should help with the echo. Is that better? Can yes. you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's much better. Okay. You took off your headphones now. Never mind. Okay, did you mute? Okay. Make sure. <laughs> Suzanne and I are going back and forth. So, um, so should we just? Um, it's, it's already broadcast and it's already live, right? And then we just cut it off. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're we're recording now. Um, so, and I have all of this here. Okay. Suzanne, do you want to wait for other people to join, or are you? I think we should wait a little bit because yeah. there were um, there are a couple of people that wanted like to get six on. Or eight people that wanted to get on. Okay. Um, okay. And can you do that? And I'll just get um, give you a rundown of who Su Suzanne is um, since we <laughs> um, since we're here. So Suzanne, um, uh, she is a angel investor in Silicon Valley. She founded Wingpact, and um, Suzanne and um, part of Wingpact and Hera Fund uh, were able to do this partnership. So, so I met her at the Hera Venture Summit. No, we, we met each other at the ACA Summit. Um, and she knows my brother up in the area. <laughs> so it's kind of like, oh, we know each other. So it's just been really cool to be able to um, collaborate. I was doing these Google Hangouts by myself, so now we have her. And we're trying to see, like, does it grow, does it not, like, where are we at? Um, Mary is on to just help with technology, but she's also a very good, awesome person. Um, and that's it. And Susanna is publishing a book um, on... Um, I thought I had it's it. A, it's, like, it's the first book about angel investing that's targeted toward women. So Wingpact are basically we're trying to activate more women angel investors. Excellent. So that's it's on Amazon, but we'll have actual books May first. Nice. And then I didn't I didn't put two and two together, um, Suzanne. That Jerry Stengel. Yes. She was um, one of your um, authors. He's a contributor, yes. Oh, okay, yeah, because um, I've seen, I mean, like, it's so funny because, you know, you see those names oh, all the time. Oh, because you posted, you posted on Facebook that yes. the book was mentioned in her context. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, so, and then, you know, I was like, oh, the book, she wrote, no, oh, oh she's a contributor, so yeah, it was kind of fun to, to Jerry, see her. And we also had Susan Preston contribute oh, because okay. we felt like we needed some, like, it's not an overall how to angel invest, it's not a complete package with everything you need to know, but we felt like we needed some kind of background information, and Jerry and Susan provide that, and then the rest yeah. of our writing is really kind of more personal experience. Um, oh, yeah. Stories, well, stuff. like, um, I follow Jerry all the time on all the yeah. stuff that she writes, because it's really cool, and she always has really great um, data um, on female angel investors, and even this one article that's back at 2013, 
she um, has at Golden Seeds, and she has Pipeline and Bell Capital, <laughs> and all of those. So I was like, oh, that's great, you know, and some numbers and stuff like that. So even though it is 2013, I do like following her. Yeah, she's awesome. She yeah, she's she beautiful. wrote a section like that, kind of like the landscape and the numbers. Oh, okay, neat, and, neat. You know, so okay. yeah, she's okay. great. I love Jerry. Cool. Okay, so we'll see who else comes on. Nobody else yeah, is on. Yeah, it's hard to know because last time, uh, you know, we we didn't really get started till four fifteen, so I'm not sure exactly. Oh, there's Audrey. Okay, cool. Oh, I see her face. <laughs> Hi, Audrey. Hi, do you guys mind if you don't see my face? I'm using an external monitor and it's a real pain in the neck to switch. No, that's <laughs> don't fine. Don't worry. Okay. It's a okay. Audrey, if you could mute yourself until I'm you're sorry. talking. It's a little or put some headphones in, it's a little echoey. Thanks. Yep. Cool. And then yeah. I know that um, the other person that was on um, that said they were coming, well, Vanessa, she just went out. She just left. And then um, JD's here. Yay. Um, and then um, Monse is my sister-in-law. And um, I don't know. She hasn't told me she was going to be on. So, um, And I think she just blipped on last time, right? Yeah, last time she just blipped on. So yeah. she blipped on again. And then I just want to make sure that the people that said something, I think that was only, the watching was Suzanne, Mary, and then I just um, invited a bunch of people, but nobody else said yes or no. Those other people that had said on the Google Hangout that they were coming, there was like six of them. Oh, okay. But last time, a different set showed up. So I think we can kind of do some introductions and then start. What do you think? Yeah, and if somebody else comes on, at least we have... Um, we have it um, recorded and stuff like that. Yeah, and Mary, um, I don't know much about what Mary does, but she can chime in, right? Yeah, oh yeah, Mary can, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was so... And then JD's here, and he's awesome, so um, he can introduce himself as well and get to know us, well, especially you, Suzanne, um, and Audrey as well. So, um, yeah. And then it's recorded, so we can go from there. Great. Well, Sylvia introduced me, and uh, you all know Sylvia, right? Sylvia's uh -huh. the one-woman uh -huh. ecosystem builder in San Diego, and I love working <laughs> with her. <laughs> and uh, go ahead. I'd like to hear from JD. Yeah, JD, you want to go ahead and, and introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, I'm JD Davidson. I've uh, been on the management team. Wait. With, uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me unmute you. Right? Are you? I think you're muted. Muted myself. Yeah, there you go. Here. I Hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. Nice to meet you all. I'm J.D. Davids. I've been on the uh, management teams of eight different startup companies over the last uh, 23 years. Uh, three of them went public and three of them got acquired and two of them didn't. They're learning opportunities and um, mostly I was serving the role of CFO and Chief Operating Officer. One of them I was the founder and CEO of. And uh, my passion right now is helping entrepreneurs find smart money investors, not to just get cash in their deal, but to get people that bring more than cash to the table within their specific vertical market. And uh, I really help basically reverse engineer exits. And I help entrepreneurs do that through a series of workshops and uh, some, I'll, I'll, you know, mostly workshops. So. Great. And he's here in, in our office. Uh, I mean, let me un unmute myself. I can hear you. I'm oh, sorry. He's here in our office, so it's going to be a little bit like all of us are right here, <laughs> and then you guys are over there. Um, but JD has been um, great. We have one female entrepreneur that has really benefited from his methodology, and then I meet with her, and then so we were, a were able to kind of really leverage both of our networks. And that we can talk about that today as well is that Suzanne, you can leverage your network in the Silicon Valley. I can leverage it here. JD can leverage it amongst his his people. So it's just really neat to be able to have that ecosystem for our female entrepreneurs. So, so Mary, Mary, do you, you want, want to go? go? You want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi there, I'm Mary Stovall. I'm a Google consultant. I teach uh, Google for Business and Nonprofit. I'm not sure why we have the echo, but I'm here to help so and listen. So you guys are awesome. Thank you, Sylvia. I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, no problem. And then Audrey, do you want to introduce yourself so we know who's in the room? 
I think you might be muted, Audrey. All right. Sorry, I thought I was muted when I was unmuted and vice versa. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, yeah, so nice to meet everyone who I haven't met yet. And um, I'm kind of, I, I sort of feel tangentially related, but very interested in um, all the goings on here, having gotten involved through Suzanne as the editor of the book that she put together with her um, colleagues at Wingpact, and that kind of my introduction to angel investing and entrepreneurship. Um, in a much deeper way than I had uh, been involved before. So I'm kind of following along and uh, uh, really interesting for me to, um, as, as a sort of non-professional non in this world, to kind of uh, chime in and bring that perspective to it. Um, I think that's been my role so far and we'll see. Maybe I'll learn so much that I'll no longer, that, that I'll become an expert and I'll no longer play that role. But, uh, <laughs> for now, that's what I'm doing. We have somebody that popped on. Yes, yeah, Katarina. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, sorry, one moment. And I'm Okay. Hi, y'all. Hi. Hello. Uh, yeah, I just want to listen in. My name is Katya Grishna. Um, I'm actually one of the new ambassadors for the Sorrento Valley uh, Hub, and I'm actually um, going into the org organic baby food space and uh, just want to say hi real quick and really get to see what you guys have to say today. <laughs> Great. I'm so happy to have the, um, the group of you here. I love it when there's a selection of different roles in a discussion. Sure. And I'm, I'm particularly excited about this topic because when I started thinking about you know, writing this book with my Wingpack colleagues and doing research and interviewing people in the, um, in the space, you know, I just hear a lot of, well, it sounds like whining to me, like, well, women angel investors are risk averse, you know, or like, Right. You know, they always write a small check, you know, so I, I was just interested in that because I, um, and I write about this in the book and in my blog, but I, a takeaway for me is, well, in general, women investors are different, clearly, right? And then, and also angel investing is new to a lot of us. We're kind of flooding the field right now and a lot of us are new, so... Um, you know, there there may be areas where our differences are actually positive to the ecosystem, and there may be areas where we can challenge each other and take a look at our behaviors, and make the whole system better for everyone. So that I've just I've been wanting for a long time to start convening discussions on that, those particular questions. So I'm incredibly excited that we're doing it today. And Sylvia mentioned to me that she works a lot with advising. Um, advising her entrepreneurs about, you know, addressing risk with in investors, particularly women investors. So I'm really interested to hear, you know, her, I've never had a chance to hear Sylvia talk about that before too. So I'm happy to just open it up. Sylvia, I don't know if you want to launch us off or... Yeah, I think one of the things that, that I like to um, focus in on is that when entrepreneurs come to me and talk to me about what is it like to to invest, what are, are investors looking at, um, especially female uh, investors, I like to start with saying that um, you need to know where their shoes are. Like how are they they how are they positioned? And they're positioned in in an environment that's male dominated first. So then either that they're experienced angel investors and they've always been around other male. Um, investors and how do they feel about that? They might feel a little bit either inadequate sometimes, I'm just being, you know, like putting it out there, and sometimes they're very adequate and they're very informed and equipped and awesome, okay? So we have that whole spectrum. And then you have to also think about these women who are just starting off angel investing, and it's very high risk. Um, and research out there shows that even if you're looking at um, like the stock market, if you educate that woman, in the stock market and investing, she feels equally as confident as a male counterpart 
to invest because of that education. And I think that that's why we're seeing a huge uprising of different boot camps and different educational experiences for female angel investors because we can invest. We do have the capital to invest. We have had one, at least one career um, kind of run for some of these ladies that have, have been able to go into the professional field, have been able to make enough money and have enough money to invest. Or they have inherited money and they're like, okay, now I can invest. So not that everybody's like that. I would just say that we have had at least one kind of go at these women who are able to be angel investors. And now they're like, okay, now we need to educate them. So the ones that I know, and please add to it, Suzanne, if I'm missing them, um, the boot camps that are out there are 37 Angels. So that's a boot camp that is from 37 Angels. is an angel group in New York City, started by Angela Lee. And um, she, her, her whole thought process is really busy professional women and men um, um, don't have enough time to kind of get educated. So I'm going to do it all in one Saturday or one, one, one fell swoop. She gives you a great binder with lots of information. She is like heavily educated and amazing um, giver of knowledge. So that is 37 Angels Boot Camp. Um, and you just get the boot camp and you're done and you get that information. Then there's Rising Tide Fund. Um, Suzanne, right, you're, you're part of it and I'm part of it, um, correct? So, yes. um, yeah. And that's more of active investing. You are able to um, be part of a fund that wants to invest in uh, different um, startups. And you as a collective learn as you're going through with you know, chats and information and education and getting everybody together. You have eight mentors, 88 um, angel investors that have bought, got into this fund. It, is, it was started by Alicia Robb and Trish Costello. Trish Costello is from Portfolio. Alicia Robb is from Kaufman. Great women, amazing women who want to advocate for female angel investors, so that's really cool. Um, other ones are female funders. Um, Catherine Haig, and I, I think that I said that last name correctly, um, and she just launched it, so I'm going through it right now. Um, it's very much like, okay, let's have a talk here, let's have a talk there, um, let's have some education, and really kind of um, piecemeal, which is really great. Um, to get that that foundation, and then now she's creating an alumni fund, so we all can put in a thousand dollars to create a fund to fund um, um, entrepreneurs. The other ones are um, Pipeline Angels, which used to be called Pipeline Fellowship, and that's from Natalia Oseguera. And again, Suzanne and I went through that and different times, um, but that is social socially relevant. Um, entrepreneurs and ventures that we are socially attached to and the program takes you through it and you have to invest at the end. So that's very active investing and getting that little toe in. Now that little toe in, let's talk about risk around there. So that those are all the programs. Am I missing any? Well, I mean the space is exploding right now yeah. so there's always more yeah. programs but those are the big ones and and Sylvia, Sylvia is the only one I know who's doing them all, so she really can speak to the differences. And can really <laughs> it's advise, fun. It's, it's you know, fun. It's fun. Looking to get started. And, oh, and I think and Tatiana, um, Tatiana, the one who did all the podcasting, she's starting her own educational like workshops. Um, yeah, now, with all of that, I think that that kind of leads us into that risk risk conversation. And Pipeline says, okay, look, we're going to de-risk these angel investors who are just starting off, these emerging angel investors to say, hey, I'm going to tiptoe into $5,000 investment as an LLC, as a, co a collective, so that all of us are doing the due diligence together. Let's go all in and invest in one startup and see, you know, all these eggs in one basket. Let's see how, how that person does. So that's one way of de-risking and, and mitigating that risk is to get everybody together. And that's similar to like creating an angel group like you did with Wingpack, Suzanne, is that you brought these wonderful educated ladies together and you de-risked each other because you're able to do due diligence together. And I think that that's one thing that as women, because we are very collaborative and, and connected, why not do the due diligence together to de-risk us, even if we have a risk portfolio or risk uh, profile of some sort. So I think that those two things I wanted to kind of start with is that is that by education we can de-risk ourselves, whatever tolerance that we have, 
Um, and then secondly is really build on that collaborative environment that we have. I send you, Suzanne, some great w women. You send me some great women that we can both invest in, and then we are able to say, hey, it's a good, it's a good decision um, to go forwards. So I think that's interesting. What, I mean, we do know that women investors in all kinds of investing make great investors once they have the confidence and they get confidence through education. So when you're advising, and, and um, uh, Katya can jump in on this too, like when you're advising entrepreneurs specifically, you know, how to talk to women angels, do the, you, are you saying you advise them that, they, that women angels may desire more information about the companies or more education about the market or um, I mean do you see that difference happening and is it helpful? Is that what do you helpful? see it JD? It, unmute you. Oh. I definitely think that education brings uh, more confidence and better investments um, because I spent a fair amount of time with the Koretsu Forum and they're very educated. With Brian Smith, the founder of Ugg Boots, uh, we taught their Capital Access series uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, sharing of best practices, I think, is really a great way to go in terms of education. Um, there are some basic do's and don'ts uh, around angel investing. Um, and I, I think the big thing is not only portfolio selection, but then also appropriate portfolio management. Once the money goes in, how do you measure success? And is the collaborative nature, um, I mean, the collaborative nature I think is critical. Um, at the same time, there has to be accountability in terms of, from, from my angle, the way to measure success is are you on a path to an exit? Because at the end of the day, when you look back five years or ten years from now, you're all going to say, wow, we did some really great things and all that kind of stuff, and it'll be a lot more fun if you also made money along the way. And I want to help you do that. Um, because the one way to take anybody that are naysayers and prove them wrong is to make money. <laughs> the, uh, the best revenge is success, right? Um, so that's one of the main things that I hope to help you guys do is get your CEOs, your portfolio CEOs, on a path to exit. And, of course, the risk mitigation is making sure you get that next round of financing so that they're no longer turning to you for the next check. They're turning to somebody else. So the idea is to create a pipeline uh, for both the next round of financing as well as the exit and in the same way that you require your portfolio CEOs to provide you with a sales report every month or every quarter I think they should also provide you with a report on how's it going on the next round of funding have you built any relationships among the ten potential buyers of your business that's that's what I teach I think one thing that you bring up uh, one thing that you bring, you bring up that's really important that we were talking about the, at the ACA summit, which is the syndication summit we just had in Southern California, is that the more interaction that somebody has is, is through the HALO report, the more interaction that you have, the better you do and the better returns that you have. So again, that aspect of the female um, kind of psyche of being more collaborative and more communicative why not use that to our benefit as angel investors? And you bring up a good point is that, okay, ask them for those reports. Sometimes we don't ask. There's a whole plethora of, of research around women don't ask. And I think that all as angel investors, we have to actually think about that too, is how do we ask for that? How do we say, hey, you know what, we really need that, those reports? I know for, for me with my portfolio company, if they're going to New York City, I actually want them to text me. How are you doing? What can I do actually from here in San Diego? Can I connect you with somebody so that that meeting that you have in New York City is more productive? Um, when somebody goes to a manufacturing facility, I want them to actually take a picture of them being there. That helps them say, I did it. I'm, I, I'm doing great, investor. <laughs> and I can say, hey, great job, great execution great momentum, and then we can actually use that to... Um, you froze. I froze. I'm sorry. Oh, now you're back. I'm back. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that I got lost in the execution. So it, those pictures allow us to say, hey, great execution, great momentum, and then she can actually use that in a newsletter to her collaborators or to her advocates or something like that. So it kind of just helps her understand about that communication and keeping that 
momentum because that's one thing actually we talk a lot about angel office hours is how do you track momentum in a very early stage company when you don't have revenue and I'm like literally it's as easy as taking pictures when you go to the manufacturing facility it's taking pictures of let's say even a selfie I don't really care what it is um, with another advisor or another um, angel investor or a partnership that we've been trying for so long to get take a, take a picture of you being there that's huge. Um, so that's something that that um, I wanted to bring up as well is how do you de risk and how do you um, help that entrepreneur go forward? And I think JD, you bring up the great point of keeping tab, keeping tabs on that entrepreneur. One of the things that I think it's also helpful to do is in terms of managing your portfolio. Um, borrow best practices from the VCs um, and in my experience as the CFO of multiple VC backed uh, uh, companies is that they all have a template of regular monthly reports that have to be submitted they have an Excel template and they're like here fill this out send it to us every month um, the partner doesn't usually have to get too involved in that they have a junior associate that you know follows up make sure they get the report it's in the right format they scrub it down they send it back in the ones that we do most frequently are a waterfall report that has four things uh, your cash burn how many months of cash are left in the bank red yellow green if it's under six months it's red if it's uh, 6 to 12 months, it's, it's yellow. If it's over 12 months, it's green. And we all know that as soon as you raise the round, you got to start, you know, you get about a month and then you start the next round. Um, so the first one is uh, cash burn, months of cash in the bank, uh, customer traction, which is usually revenue, but it could be downloads or audience or whatever. Um, and then I think the next one was profitability, but that usually doesn't really matter that much. Um, so I think that might be helpful to adopt. I'd be happy to you know, donate those templates that I've done before. Secondly, um, milestone management. Um, and this is what I wanted to meet with you about, Silvio, was to uh, chat with you about and giving you a template for milestone management. Um, every single portfolio startup should have three key milestones that you're holding them accountable to. Um, one would be customer traction. That's absolutely number one because it drives your ability to get the next round as well as drive the valuation up. So valuation inflection I think is very important. If you're writing a $5,000 check or a $50,000 check, the key that you want to do is you want to buy it at a dollar and you want the next round to come in at three bucks. So the way to inflect the value up has a lot more to do with demonstrated third-party customer traction. That might be revenues, it might be downloads, it might be audience, but some tangible way of measuring that. And secondly, um, usually it's you know product. You know, so are you getting feedback from those customers and giving them what the you know? So there should be a hundred customer surveys, right? What are the results of those surveys, and how are you integrating that into your product development spend? And then thirdly, team. And you may not be able to hire full-time members, but you should be building an advisory board. One of the biggest holes that I see generally in startup companies is that they have a really great product team, but they really would benefit from having one person that has been an SVP of sales and marketing. If you want to sell your company to XYZ for 50 or $100 million, let's go find two or three people that had the title of SB, SVP of sales and marketing that actually commercialized a product in that sector and asked them to be on the advisory board. Yeah, that's helpful to hear from, can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah. Okay, I could, didn't know if I was muted mm -hmm. or not. Um, I'm glad you're here, JD, because um, my sense is from the number of startups that you've been involved in that you've been in this space for, you know, a number of years and uh, like Sylvia was saying, women angels are pretty new. I mean, when we started researching our book, the percentage of angels that were women was 6%. And then uh, a couple years later, it's already 25%. So, a, you know, a huge percentage of the... Um, oh, that's my other phone. Sorry about that. A huge percentage of the women angels... I don't know how to make it stop ...that are currently out there are brand new. So there must have been a cycle... You know, when angel investing was beginning and it was mostly men getting involved, there must have been a, you know, a, a learning cycle that happened then. I don't know when that was, 20 years ago or whatever. And so I feel like there's a group of us that are kind of there now. And it's, you know, great to have um, advice from, from people who've been around for a long time. And I'm just wondering, you know, if there's like missteps that you saw that could be avoided by the new groups coming in or, you know, that kind of thing. 
I think one of the biggest missteps there, I, I, would, I would say there's two of them. One is um, not, holding, not holding the portfolio companies accountable enough to driving milestones which drive the value up um, because portfolio CEOs, including myself, are ADD. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? They are, right? They love shiny objects, right? And they want to get involved in 16,000 different things. And, you know, that's, that's the creative personality, right? And the reason that they are a startup entrepreneur is because they are a creative mind. They are nonlinear, right? That's what allows them to come up with unique solutions. They see things that other people can't see. And sometimes there's too many of them. So let's just be honest about that and transparent about it, which is why I love what you said, Sylvia, about um, the collaborative nature of women, because trust and transparency is one of the most important things that either works or doesn't work. If if there's a, I mean, people, investors, VCs, angels, they 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 bet on jockeys, not on the horse, right? And it's all based on trust. If I give you five million dollars and I don't trust you, I'm not going to give you five million dollars, right? But if you tell me that you're going to come in reasonably within your expenses, um, but I, I think the point there is number one, hold them accountable and be very specific with here's the three milestones. And at the end of the quarter, at the end of the month, you know, we're going to, sure, we'll, we'll have lots of good conversations, but every month we're going to have a very serious conversation about milestones, and you're going to show me a report of what you did and, and what worked and what didn't and what, how I can help, right? I mean, every sort of board meeting should have, here's what worked, here's what didn't, honestly, and here's how, I, here's how you can help. So many CEOs treat a board meeting like it's an information dump and it's a one-way conversation. That's absolutely wrong. I can read a PowerPoint. I can skim through it in 15 minutes and tell you where the problems are. But what I can't find, if the CEO doesn't tell me, is how I can help you. Um, the second thing that I would add to that is um, investing outside of your own domain expertise is very dangerous. Um, Peter Lynch. <laughs> the very famous author of Beating Wall Street or whatever his book was 20 some years ago. Um, One Up on Wall Street, I believe was the name of it. He said, invest in things that you know. Um, if you go to Chipotle, or well, that's a bad example. <laughs> this is a really bad example. Okay. But, but the idea is, and this is what I tell all my portfolio companies, you can have investors in your deal that don't understand your industry, but they can't be the lead investor. They shouldn't be the lead investor. Um, and this is what I see happening on AngelList all over the place, and I believe it is the future of early stage investing, is that you get one person that's the lead investor that really knows how to scrub them down. That person takes the board seat. That person goes to the board meetings, holds them accountable to milestones, and once they lead and say, okay, I'm putting ten grand into this deal, then you can, you can have a bunch of other people that are writing five ten thousand dollars $10,000 checks to back them up as part of a syndicate, right? But my encouragement is always have somebody that's this is smart money, somebody that under the, for example, most of my clients right now and people that I mentor, I tell them, look, if you're in the educational, I have one client that's in the educational uh, software media space, right? And I'm basically telling them, you need a lead investor. And actually, everybody that they've pitched has said, oh, go get a lead investor and then we'll follow. Great, then let's focus on that, right? So we made a list of who the rock stars are in that industry that have already sold a company in the educational uh, e-media space for over $100 million. Or maybe it's $50 million, right? Mm -hmm. But if you don't meet that bar, you're not on the list. And not that you're not really brilliant and intelligent and all this wealthy and all this kind of stuff. We need somebody that can... Because guess what? If we get somebody involved in the deal that has climbed the mountain that we want to climb successfully, they're going to... They're going to march us into the, you know, put, let them put ten grand in. They're going to march us right into the people that they already made a bunch of money for, right? They've already made a bunch of friends, they, and they know where all the bodies are buried. It's they really know. interesting that you say that, JD. That's sort of that syndication idea because you know we talked on our last conversation a month ago that you know women tend to seem to kind of like these opportunities to have a bunch of people investing relatively smaller checks and it sounds like from what you're saying is you could syndicate a deal where the lead investor you said 10k actually isn't even writing that large of a check but their expertise is is huge and then that Absolutely. investor because of their expertise they can bring in enough other people that may or may not have the expertise but it ends up being a good size investment 
and it catapults you forward. Go ahead, Sylvia. No, 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 go ahead. It catapults you forward. I'll give you an example. A company called Levita Magnetics was a surgical device company out of Chile, and they wanted to come to San Francisco, and they had a surgeon that was the CEO, and he they raised a million and a half to go into phase two clinical trials. And the CEO said to his investor, he said, I know at some point I'm not I'm not the business guy. I'm I'm you know, I'm I'm the surgeon. <clears throat> so right now I can't afford I, I would benefit greatly from bringing in a CEO who's been there and done that. But I can't afford one on a full time basis. And quite honestly, in the middle of the phase two clinical trials, we don't need a full time CEO. There's just not that much to do. Um, so what we did was go out and we recruited an executive chairman. And that was somebody who could be the CEO but we only need that person one day a week and so we gave them a package that looked like a fractional CEO package in fact it was a fractional CEO package we paid him five or six thousand dollars a month in cash for one day a week and we granted him stock of six percent not unlike hiring a CEO but it's it's fractional the guy that we brought in and sold his last company which was a surgical device company which was the last in a string of like six or seven successes for six hundred and fifty million dollars. I mean, just by him signing up with that company, the value just popped way up. Mm -hmm. Because when they're done with phase two clinical trials and they're ready to go into the surgical suites and sell this product, this he, this person was, you know, number he sold his last company for six hundred and fifty million dollars. So he shopped it to all of the big you know, medical device companies. He got the revenues from zero to uh, three hundred million dollars, or some you know wonderful number. So they've already yeah, gone not, down the path that we want to go down. And so getting him to the yeah. table was invaluable. But and that, that that's a yeah. great example. I'm gonna. I'm sorry. Um, that's a great example. I love that. I think that for for me, you know, like as a gender lens person, and like being this this close and center with that is that there have been years and years and years of men who have been able to do that, to be able to sold and all that. We're kind of on the upswing of that female trend. So let's say a female founder, she has a female angel investor who's new, she's new, an entrepreneur is new, the angel investor is new. Um, and how do you de-risk de both sides saying, okay, so do we need a lead investor who's a guy or do we find that lead investor who is um, a woman who has been experienced? I mean, we have a lot of experienced angel investors here in Sylvia, San Diego. Sylvia, your sound, are other people having trouble hearing Sylvia? Or? No? No. I'm having trouble hearing Sylvia. I can't hear any. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm quiet now. Can you hear me now? You're breaking up a little bit. I'm hearing you fine. It's not okay, great. I'll just keep on going then. But I think that that's the conversation that I see is that awesome, awesome example, awesome information. And yes, I think that in 20 years from now, we can, we might be able to have that same conversation and that same example. But what do we do in this interim to decrease that risk of, hey, you know what? I mean, and, and I think one of the one of the obvious answers is syndication is you know syndicate with Tech Coast Angels, is syndicate with others. However, there's a but always to everything that I say, <laughs> is that syndicate with those, but the some of the deals that Suzanne, let's say, and myself are going into are the non-traditional deals. And even though we're not, let's say we might, we do you know 5x return instead of really high returns or whatever because there's a social, I don't know, I'm just kind of putting it out there. Um, then how do you go about doing that? And how do you how do you um, not de risk yourself, but manage that? So what I would encourage is that we identify the female rock stars who have been there and done that. Katarina Fake is a great example. She's a friend of mine that we worked together at Organic Online back in 1996, and she you know, she's on the board of Etsy. She co she uh, she founded Flickr. Um, I mean, so in the tech industry. She's a rock star, and if we go to her with this conversation and say, look, you know, I, perhaps we should take this discussion group that you've started, Sylvia, and turn it into somewhat of a mastermind, yeah. um, where we basically identify a few vertical industries where we do have excellent success stories, like the one that I just shared with a, with a female in the, in the driver's seat, and let's not only celebrate them, but let's ask them to, like, if you think about TCA, <coughs> when you think about Koretsu form, um, have one person to sort of lead the 
you know, Edutech, you know, deal review process, right? Oh. Um, so that they bring that domain expertise so that they can shoot holes in what's never going to work and tell us what's really going to work and if it is who we need to add to the team. Um, I think biotech, there are a lot of fantastic women entrepreneurs who have done extremely well. Uh, Tina, Tina Nova is a great example here in San Diego. You know, and you know, she's a friend. Um, she, and I know that, you know, wow, I mean, all we have to, let's, let's, they're out there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, yeah. Let's engage them and say, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do syndicated deals with a lead investor that has domain vertical expertise. Would you be willing to help? And I think you're going to get a lot of yeses. Um, I also think in the education space is another place where we can find a lot of really great successful women. Um, the CEO of Blackboard right now is a woman that's on the target list for one of my clients. It's an educational technology company that I just shared. She is our number one target right now, both in terms of potential investor as well as an advisory board member. So what I would encourage you is to find those people that you can celebrate that have sold a company for over $100 million. And you, you know, I don't know. Called a liquid platinum club, right? Like they made a lot of money and not just on paper. Right? They actually got a liquidity event because that is the one measurement that, regardless of gender, cannot be argued with. Yeah, I like that. Regardless of gender, I like that. <laughs> yes, that's, that's so, so nice. nice. Yeah, that's um, great. Yeah. That. And, and, that, and, and that's, that's what, what I also go towards, towards is what's your marriage, marriage? guy or, or, or woman? Um, it's just we don't have a lot of examples, but, but if we can bring those together, that would be awesome. Um, so I like that. I like that aspect of it. One thing that you also brought up that I just wanted to make sure, because I had a little note there to, to mention it, is that um, in the board meetings of you know, like on a monthly basis, to be honest, I find that that my portfolio companies are actually brutally honest with me. Um, like I am doing really bad, or I'm doing really really good, or I don't know how to do this. How do I navigate that? There are a lot. Um, I have tissue boxes. Um, I don't have one now, but I'm always in my office because it's always, it, it's just, it's it's very um, um, honest. I, I don't feel like that's ever um, a problem. Now, of course, I haven't been around for that much long, much amount of time and uh, really dealing with very early stage companies, so it's very one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I, I just wanted to kind of put it out there that woman to woman, I feel like they're very honest, and I love that about that, and I love that vulnerability and um, being able to help them truly where they truly need help. I don't know about you, how do you feel about that, Suzanne? About your portfolio companies? Uh, yeah, I think there is, you know, a, in general, a difference in, in terms of how women will present their progress or, or their numbers. I'm very curious to hear from Katya and from the entrepreneur side and her experience of, uh, around uh, fundraising and uh, you know helping investors, male or female, understanding understand her business and and you know what um, Katya maybe what you've experienced around what really does help people and potential investors uh, feel confident about the, you know, the risk level. Right. Um, thank you, Suzanne. Uh, can everyone hear me all right? Yes, I can. Okay, Okay. good. Um, well, I actually, right now, where I am is in the very initial stages of looking to um, open the Organic Baby Foods product here. Now, it's completely all in my reins, and I don't think I'm anywhere close to um, getting funding. Uh, actually, that's a lie, maybe a few months away, but um, in my experience, I actually been, I was pretty much raised in the Silicon uh, Bay area, uh, and I've worked for lots of startups, um, and most recently, actually, after graduating from UC San Diego, um, I worked for a med tech uh, startup that had about four or five employees, um, and I was an employee like number four, I guess you could say. And it's interesting uh, that, you know, we're having this conversation, and thank you so much. I'm learning a lot. But from my experience, actually, the transparency aspect um, is something that is really valuable in both the angel perspective, VC, or even being an entrepreneur. And so um, in my experience, I've seen... VC funds, um, you know, that were investing in the companies that I work for, uh, from a down in the trenches perspective, and so I actually saw uh, some things that you know 
I probably would have never done in terms of ethics or um, or even in terms of like business decisions. But I have a question for you guys. Uh, being angel investors and you know, wanting to have a very open relationship with the founders or the people who are leading um, the companies that you're investing in, how do you go about actually establishing that era of or that air of transparency just because from you know some things that I've seen in Silicon Valley is you know it's com completely two-sided and you know sometimes the entrepreneurs may not be a hundred percent transparent or the VCs might not be a hundred percent transparent so as angel investors you know what are some things that you guys do um, to distinguish and establish that transparency well, I, I know that um, I, I'm very transparent, so that's just who I am. So um, a lot of the entrepreneurs like that about me, that I am that way. Um, I kind of shoot from the hip, but that's just a personal um, way of doing things. I, that's, I stay with my values, and I will never compromise them. So that's good or bad or indifferent, but... That's, my entrepreneurs know that, and I, they know that I'm beyond supportive, and that's what I just com c consistently communicate. I'm, I'm always going to be here for you. I'm always supportive, but, man, I will poke holes through things, and I'll make sure that things get done, and I want milestones to be accomplished. And, uh, again, like I'm like, I want a picture in the manufacturing facility. Well, you know, I went up. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I don't want to hear that. I want you to send a picture to me when you're there. And it's not, and I'm like, I just want to know, like, how's it going? How are the the CAD designs going? Is is there a change? Let me know. Let's talk about it. I I can handle CAD CAD design. <laughs> um, so um, I think that for me personally, I'm very upfront and um, honest, and I reciprocate that in the entrepreneur. I want them to be honest as well. So I choose very wisely, as JD and Suzanne also have iterated through this discussion is the team, the team, the team. The jockey, the jockey, the jockey. Uh, that's And trust, trust, trust. Those are the three main things that I would kind of um, go after because I'm very early stage. Suzanne, do you want to add to it? Yeah, I mean, I think I was going to say basically what you did, which is, you know, when we're considering an investment, we look at, you know, what the kind of, what the relationship is going to be like with that person. Um, and then I've just found, you know, the more I get involved in the company, the more I get to find out. So it's, you know, it's a relationship development in both directions. If, if, um, if I'm not too involved, then, you know, I don't get my emails answered very fast. But if I'm bringing value, then, then I get information and, and that relationship builds. And I, I think it's a win-win. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, any thoughts, J.D.? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love the fact that the transparency is probably easier to achieve uh, with 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 women um, because I think it's great. I, I think that authenticity has to be there. I've seen it far too many times in Silicon Valley where the CEO is afraid to be completely transparent with the investors because their biggest fear is getting fired as CEO and losing their job, so they tend to cover up the problems and hope that they're going to be able to address it, and that's exactly the wrong thing to do, because usually the investors, assuming you have the right ones, they can actually help you solve the problem. But uh, so, so definitely transparency and, and being honest about what's not working and, oh my gosh, this isn't happening, that conversation should absolutely happen. And at the same time, I was in the Marine Corps for four years, and one thing that I've heard not only from Marine Corps officers, both men and women, but also from many, many investors, is they say, you know what, if a CEO brings me a problem and just wants me to hand him a box of a Kleenex, then that is a situation A, and there's no solution in that. But what I can tell you about leadership, what I have learned, is that if you want to be a leader, you not only acknowledge a problem, but you can very quickly assess here are our options, A, B, and C, right? I don't know the exact answer right now, but here's my assessment. Pros and cons of A, pros and cons of B, pros and cons of C. I haven't made a final decision, but my gut is telling me B, and here's how we're going to get more information to make this decision. What do you think? So any CEO, regardless of gender, that walks in and says, we have a problem, 
and we don't have a clue how to solve it, we'll get fired, right? But if you have a CEO that comes in that shows leadership and is transparent and says, yes, we have a problem, we don't know the exact solution, but here's at least three options, here's my evaluation of those options, and let's have an open, candid discussion about it. Yeah, no, that is, that is good. Um, I think that's very important to establish that human relationship. I mean, certainly, you know, relationships are how, you know, we function as business individuals, as human beings as well. Um, I guess for me, what I've learned um, in my experience is that it's when the when you can identify that the the founders or the CEOs have that innate passion for their idea, they will find those solutions and they will come to you, um, you know, if they're aware essentially, <laughs> but they will come with solutions and kind of like the counsel because for me personally, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to bring someone on board that I would just want their capital resources, you know, the network is very important and also, um, you know, the resources that people have built in their communities and, and what have you. So, um, just that's what I've noticed that passion is that that missing ingredient have you guys noticed that as well for for me um, I I actually whenever I meet with my uh, uh, let's say a potential new portfolio client or portfolio um, company I actually let them know look I it's not in my real well like it's not in my industry however I like you and I don't mind putting some money in but it's not my industry. I can't give you that value. Know that. That's a risk that you inherently take on by taking my money. So I would advise you not to take my money and go to somebody else who does have that network. Um, even though, it's, I mean, we can have a conversation and I can be really helpful to you and supportive and get you in front of angel groups because you can pitch and I know how to do that. I know how to get you in front of other ones, but necessarily I don't know the industry. So I think it also is on, I always, I always look at the venture table that it's on both sides. There's both sides that need to know from each other and learn from each other. That's why we have these conversations is because, okay, like one side needs to know that the other side, how, how is each side kind of defining itself and what are the risks on each side? And if the angel investor says, hey, you know what, I'm not in the industry, don't get money from me because you need to go for somebody else that's actually doing that entrepreneur a favor, right? And that's how I feel like whenever I do have conversations with them, I give, I'm doing them a favor, saying, look, I don't mind investing in you. However, you should be going after this other person. And I can introduce you to that person, but you need to be considering that as well. You need industry-specific people who will put you to that next level, who will get you the next round of funding, just like JD said. And if I was your financial advisor, I would advise you to not give them the check until they go get that lead investor. <laughs> because I want you to get a return on your money. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. I think the other thing about transparency, which is really good, I hear a lot of portfolio CEOs complain all the time. They're like, well, we raised money from Sequoia, and they said that they were going to make all these introductions, and they never really did. And I always ask them, I'm like, well, did you give them a list of here's the five people that I'm trying to target? Well, no, they just said they were going to make a bunch of introductions. It's like, do you know how many people and how many deals they look at every day? If you don't go to them and say, these are five people that I'm trying to get a meeting with, can you help, right? I guarantee you that if you ask for that, they will find a way to get there. And, you, and the same thing about transparency with problems, like if we have a manufacturing problem, and here's options A, B, and C, right? And they're having a candid, real conversation about what the problem is, Many times the VC or the investor or what have you or maybe even the advisory board member will pipe up and say, you know, I was in Cabo last weekend in the pool having margaritas and I met this guy or this gal from XYZ company and I'll bet you he or she could help us out. And that's where I think if, you, if you're very on mission, you're on point, we have got to get the first sample at like manufacturing. Sylvia, you mentioned manufacturing. It's like, yeah, go to the plant, take a picture, absolutely. But more importantly, when are we going to have the first 500 units delivered mm -hmm. and work backwards from that? What is the date that we're going to get the first sample off the manufacturing line? Backwards from that, what is the date that we're going to have the tooling completed? Backwards from that, when do we have to, you know, when do we need the contract signed? Backwards from that, it's going to take two to three weeks to get that done, which means if you don't have a term sheet by X date, then we're never going to get 500 units delivered on September 5th. 
So being that specific about the milestones and being absolutely laser focused on hitting it come hell or high water, I think is one thing where angel investors in particular can really help their portfolio CEOs because if I guarantee you, if you put some teeth behind that, it will get their focus. And all of a sudden, the, the reason entrepreneurs don't get things done that they're supposed to get done is because they get distracted by the shiny objects and their calendar is clogged by a bunch of stuff that's uh, urgent but not important. Um, you can help them cut through that clarity. And one thing that I've done with a couple of portfolio companies is I say, okay, one-third of your salary only comes if you hit these milestones. So your base salary is only two-thirds of the number that we agreed upon. So that, believe me, that cuts through the clutter in a real hurry because they're going to feel it every month. Yeah, I agree with JD. I mean, Katya, you were talking about passion, and every entrepreneur is passionate. But I really want to also look at, like, how do they – I mean, I'm part engineer, so how do they think about a problem? How do they deconstruct a problem? How do they, how do they listen and integrate, you know, new information from me or for wherever they get it? So, um, yeah, I definitely want to see – passion, but it's, it's, it's not enough to guarantee that a CEO or a team is going to be able to, um, you know, to solve the problems and track to the, to the milestones. So, I agree. Uh, so we are passion almost at 5 o'clock. Uh, um, passion uh, is necessary, but not oh, sufficient. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so I want to make sure Mary and Audrey have a chance to reflect if they want to. I, I know, you know, Audrey considers herself a little bit of an outsider, but you've always got some interesting perspective that nobody else thought of. So in these last few minutes, I just want to hear thoughts from you two, if you have any um, anything circling around. Sure. Um, so it's really interesting to hear. I, I sort of picked out a couple of the big points, and one thing is this, just this idea of connection and how... Um, you know, Suzanne, you were saying that sort of the angel investing world for men was, you know, established whenever it was, and so there's kind of this, um, what you call the ecosystem is all there. It's relatively easier to go and say, find that person who's, you know, done all the deals already. And um, it just, for me, kind of confirms, you know, the stuff that you guys were writing about in the book, which is that because the momentum is starting for women, it's now, you know, it's sort of a, a um, fulfilling prophecy, but a um, it, it's kind of gathering its own momentum um, because, you know, the more people that get involved, the more opportunities there are for those connections to get made. Um, and it's, it's a little, um, a, you know, on the flip side of that, I guess it's a little, you know, just it kind of confirms. It's like, it's not so much what you know, it's who you know. And, you know, just to sort of hear that, um, it, that really comes out in this idea that, oh, well, you know, you can have all these people that have all this money, but if they haven't necessarily done a deal before, they're not going to really be useful to you. So you need to find that person who can be um, not just give you the money, but give you, you know, all the other things that you need. So, so that was one of the main things that, that jumped out at me um, as I was listening to you guys. That's awesome. Mary, you want to? Thanks. Yeah, you know, what I'm super impressed with and I think is fabulous is the transparency and the trust factor that you guys are bringing to the table because that's something I strongly believe in. I, high integrity is important to me. And having all of you talk in that manner and teach people, this is the reality. And a long time ago I was on a startup who did not practice those things and it didn't work very well and so it's really I'm just honored to be in the room with you guys and hear that conversation happening. I, it's super important to me as a person and as that's how I run my business so awesome. Thank you. Do you want to, um, am I muted? I don't know if I am or not. I was no. Okay. Um, so yeah, thanks Suzanne for um, for being part of it. Thanks JD. Thanks Mary. Thanks Audrey. Thanks Yekaterina. I don't know if, if that's how you say your name, but um, uh, yes. Thanks. Katya. It's the long way. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I have to say it the long way. So it sounds I appreciate better. It. Um, but thanks for everybody to be on. I think it's a great collaboration Suzanne and I are doing. We're just going to keep on going, and and keep on the conversation, and just it's. 
it it's awesome. Thanks, Suzanne. You want to end it? Yeah. Well, um, I we've already chosen our topic for next month. It came out of last month's yeah. discussion, and next month we're going to talk about diversity and access to resources for women entrepreneurs of color and women um, investors of color and again that was a question that came up in our last session in uh, February and we didn't have time to to really address that so we're going to spend a whole conversation on that next month which will be the the fourth Thursday of April April 28th April 28th um, and all of these conversations started out of uh, Harris Venture Summit in September and we're kind of you know aiming toward that this September so everything that we learn out of these conversations will continue to uh, again I'm writing up each conversation so that we can share the um, sort of the ahas and the insights that came out of the groups with we can share that with the world and continue the conversation that way beyond the six people that are here and again the topics come sort of come out of the group and roll forward and we'll just bring all of those threads to the Venture Summit and September. The Venture Summit is, oh sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Venture Summit is September 17th and 2016. We already have our keynote which is uh, Alicia Robb. Oh, fabulous. And Trish Costello. So they're going to do a co-keynote which is kind of fun. It's going to be at USC. And we'll be continuing the Google Hangouts. Oh, there was one more thing that I wanted to say uh, was that these Google Hangouts are available on YouTube afterwards. So, and also Suzanne writes them up. So thank you, Suzanne, uh, for writing it up. So it's, it's great. great. It's a great conversation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. In terms of wing packs, where we are right now is we are crowdfunding for our, our last expenses for getting those books actually physical. And and we have a link uh, on Amazon for pre-order if you know women that you would like to sort of gently introduce the idea of angel investing to, uh, buy them a book. That's all I have for today. Thank awesome. you, Sylvia, and everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm thank super you. thrilled to be part of this conversation. Yeah, thanks for joining us. <laughs> thanks, y'all. Nice um, to meet you. You guys, nice to meet you as well, everyone. Yeah. Stop broadcast. Okay.